So you reckon you can... Here? So you reckon you can Photoshop that into the Carlton photo? Yeah, I know they don't wear hats and scarves, but I thought it was a nice touch. Yeah, okay, righto. G'day guys. Thanks for tuning in to having a chat this week. Um, now, a bit of a different twist. You can see I've got my footy gear on. Um, a few weeks ago I interviewed Sophie Shaw, the young mummy, and Sophie's fiancé is Jared Kasher, who was on Carlton's list. He played a few games for Carlton, um, and now Jared's actually captain of Richmond's VFL side. So it was great to sit, uh, sit down and chat with Jared because not a lot of footballers, I think, open up and talk about you know, being a rookie and how that affects your life and relationships and all that sort of stuff. So it was, I really enjoyed it. It's probably my favourite interview that I've done so far. Um, I haven't had someone open up as much as Jared did, so I really appreciated that. Um, so here's my interview with Jared Kasher. Now, led up to the draft in 2009, did you have expectations on being drafted? Early in the year, going for Vic Menchango at Ange Files, yeah. I was told, look, you're not going to get picked because, one, they don't think you're good enough, and two, they've got other midfielders. And that um, that really hit home hard, and I actually wanted to quit footy. Yeah. I cracked the shits. Um, first time I've ever done that. I remember one night of training, it was just come after we lost the first two rounds of the season at the Knights by like 100 plus points we'll get at Albert and I just perforated my eardrum um, the week before and I was in a bit of pain, I was at training on Thursday and had a dirty night on the track yeah. and I walked off and I thought, you know what, stuff this, I don't want to do it anymore. I'd just come home, just come home from a trip overseas, yeah. played rugby, loved it, I thought to myself, no, nah, stuff it, I'm going to go play rugby at school, yeah. just get away from footy for a while. Um, walked out of the rooms that night, said to the coaches, I'm not playing this weekend, rang my dad in the car, mum picked me up and said, I don't want to play footy anymore. And then the next day, Dennis Payton was a coach at the time, um, rang me and said, well, I want you to come around for a coffee at my job, we're going to have a chat. And just had a good chat with Dennis and then he basically said to me, because he'd obviously known what had been told, the feedback I've got in terms of, you know, it's my draft year, what people had said to me, he said, you know what, son, don't worry about it. You know, you control what you can control, and that is go out every weekend, play as well as you can, and basically he gives the stuff what people think of you. And then from that day on, um, it sort of gave me a drive, and, and Dennis is really good in terms of just all year he'd just reiterate what he'd said that day, just said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Just play your natural game. Um, and so going into like halfway through the year, sort of had a, I got a few letters from clubs that were interested and then I always thought I was an outside chance for some unknown reason. But that's just what I was getting told. Um, I was going to be a rookie at best and then draft. Um, came along and I didn't put too much pressure on myself. I didn't want to build it up that, yeah, I was going to get drafted, I was going to get drafted. I went into the draft thinking, look, I'm not going to get picked up. Yeah. And that's just the mindset I was in. The bonus of what happened, if it didn't, um, I just looked for the next best opportunity. Obviously it didn't, but then, um, yeah, ended up getting registered that year by Carlton. So when you were rookie, what was it like trying to establish yourself amongst like a an AFL team that was already settled and you sort of come in, especially as a rookie, not on the senior list. What was it like trying to establish yourself? Yeah, it was it was tough. I just wanted to go in there. I was always a hard worker, and I never changed. I just wanted to just go in there, work as hard as I could, just get the most out of you know. It could be it could have been a year, it could have been five years. I didn't know. So yeah, um, just trying to do as much as I could, right? Um, and so you, you, know, you go in there in your first training session, you know, there's Chris Jokes and yeah. he's still a bit shell shocked and there's Mark Murphy and you're getting to know these guys. Um, so, and Carlton as well though, at that time they were really building yeah. um, to playing finals free. So I, was gonna, I knew it was going to be tough to break in, but I just, my biggest goal, I'd never played senior footy before as well, so yeah. I just wanted to play well at BFL senior level. Mm. Um, so that was sort of my goals and, and just really trying to develop um, from then. So, 
you were on a wing list for two years. Yeah. And at the end of 2011, you were delisted. Now, this morning, I read an article that said you walked into your end of season meeting knowing what was sort of coming. How, what, how did you prepare yourself for that? Yeah, I suppose I look at, like I said before, I, I would get myself into a real realist mindset. I don't try and fabricate something or, or try and think of the perfect situation. I try and live in what I think is going to happen, what I know is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and some people might see that as a, as a negative mindset. I just, I don't, I don't want to build things up and then just get let down. Yeah. Um, so I walked in there, I'd been on the rookie list for two years, played some good senior footy at VFL, but you know, the Blues in 2011 were three points away from playing a preliminary final. Yeah. And you just, the midfield at that stage was on fire. You know, Jade had just come off the ground with a medal. Mark Murphy, Gibbs, Carazzo, all fine in the midfield. And here I am, a, you know, I was a 19 year old kid. Yeah. That it realistically I wasn't going to get a game. And I accepted that at that age. Um, still thought I was definitely good enough to play league footy. Yeah. Um, and then walked into that interview and you know, I knew, you know, I'm going to get trouble here, I'm going to get delisted, and that was fine. Um, it still was upsetting to, when you hear the words that look, we're not going to keep you on, yeah. um, we just don't see a spot for you. Um, so I walked out of there and I just rang my manager and told him what happened. I said, Look, I want to go, let's worry about finding a new home. Yeah. And go to the best place possible to try and get back on an AFL list. And I think I left that day and went for a run just to, yeah. fuck it, let's start again and yeah. get fit and healthy and move on. So, how did you land? How did you um? How did you come to the decision to go to Adelaide and play for Norwood? Um, it was a decision that it wasn't too difficult because I previously in two thousand and nine I was um, talking to Central Districts mm -hmm. over in the Sanford, and they flew me over for a weekend and I trained with them for a few sessions and. They sent me all about their annual reports and DVDs of their grand final, a big powerhouse club over there and there was, you know, 40,000 people at this grand final. Yeah. I mean, I'd never really heard about the sample. Yeah. Didn't know how big it was and it was just massive. And um, I went over there and, you know, they showed me around a lot. Their facilities were almost as good as some AFL clubs. I'm yeah. Like, Here is this, how has this competition <laughs> been around that I don't even know about? Yeah. Um, and then, they called, it's funny how word gets around quickly in the footy world, they called a couple of days after me getting delisted and like, we're really keen, we want you to come back over and have a look around. I was like, oh, okay, no worries. And yeah. From then on, the ball started rolling and I had club, I had six, six out of nine sample clubs contact me. Yeah. Um, I think I was doing trips to Adelaide every second week or so, yeah. staying for three days, doing a different club each day. Yeah. Um, had a few VFL clubs um, here that were really keen as well, um, but I wanted sort of something different. I wanted to challenge myself, yeah. and I was speaking to a few contacts down in Melbourne that said, "Look, realistically, you want to play, get a, have a good crack at playing AFL for you, and we really strongly suggest you either go and play in the Waffle, yeah. which is a, I think there's a, two clubs interested over there, or you go and play in the Sample, which is." You know, you're playing over there, you're playing against men. Yeah. Um, really, still, there's 25, 26 year old men that either have been on AFL lists, they're still playing, or they've played, you know, eight years of senior footy at the Sanford. Yeah. It's a really, really strong competition. Um, and I decided, you know, after seeing all these clubs at Norwood, they continually showed interest. Yeah. Um, wouldn't have had a look, and they just felt that they were best fit, and I made my decision to go over and play. Okay. Now, at the end of 2012, you had arguably your best season of football playing for Norwood in the sample. Um, why do you think your football was able to flourish over in Adelaide? I think... Um, I just do you think it was your best season of football? Yes. Yeah. Was, yeah, that and obviously my 2013 season at the Blues, but yeah. the Norwood season for me, it was, it was like I was a 16-year-old kid again and it was just... This is your job. You just go out and play, get the footy, yeah. um, play. And I, I really going over there. I really embraced. I think if you want 
to play well at a new club or you have to embrace what they're on about. Yeah. Um, and I find I have really good seasons under coaches that put a lot of faith in me um, and that I really believe in what they're on about. Yeah. They, they sort of give you the belief that this is your position, it's yours, um, and we want you to, this is what you want to do if you do this well, and it's better for us as a team. Yeah. But Nathan Bassett was great at, he never, everyone's on a level playing field, um, doesn't matter who you were, you know, you whether in your recruit or you've been there for five years. Or, yeah. um, and I think it was just a really good year to just go over there, really go over there as a nobody, yeah. um, and just start playing good footy again, you know, um, you're playing in front of crowds as well, which is good, you're something you don't really get here in the VFA. Or, yeah. Um, I had great family support from back home, you know, so <laughs> she'd be over at least once a month. Um, parents would be as well, and they really embraced the club as well. So yeah. it's really good when, you know, people around you, um, you know, really helping you and supporting you in what you're doing. Uh, the club were fantastic. They, um, put me in with a host lady, Heather, who was, um, she's a long time supporter of the club and I bought it at her house and, yeah. um, she was wonderful. Um, yeah, it was just a, I just really embraced the environment that I was in, I think, yeah. um, that's what really helped me play good footy. Um, now, where are we? At the end of your premiership winning season with Norwood, you were redrafted back to Carlton, played 14 games and you won best first year player. How are you feeling at the end of 2013 in regards to your football? Uh, I thought I was on the way. I wasn't, didn't get ahead of myself. Yeah. But I thought it really showed that, yeah, I can play league footy. Yeah. Um, and then I went away and, yeah, I was just like, shit, I'm really proud of myself for what I achieved. And, yeah. Um, to come from where I had been and to do what I did. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. It was, just, it was a good year. And it really firm that, yeah, I'm good enough to play yeah. footy. And then going into pre-season, had a, a good pre-season again. And yeah. then that led on to the 2014 season. Um, just backtracking a little bit, at the end of 2013, your then-girlfriend and now-fiancé Sophie fell pregnant. Yep. How hard was it to balance football and everything that was going to happen and change? with you and Sophie and then having a baby? Um, I think it wasn't too difficult. We were, it was towards the end of the year, so we just found out. It was an amazing, exciting time, like telling family and friends. Yeah. It was fantastic. But I think what helped that was going into the off season, so we had time to sort of work out, you know, okay, what we're going to do when we're going to leave, but we're going to get a new car, we're going to get the family car now. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, do all the shit we're now adults and yeah. think of someone else. Yeah. Um, so it was good, in a way, it would have been good any time to find out, but yeah. I think, yeah, that off-season period where we got time to sort of sit back and think, okay, well, this is what we'll do, we'll yeah. do that, and then we'll get settled here. Yeah, and then uh, we'll get to that bit. <laughs> we'll get to that. And then, um, yeah, so then we bought had um, bought this place in Pascal Bar and this yeah. was Bobby's first family home and yeah. we settled in and just sort of I supported her through her horrible morning sickness that she had the poor thing and just got everything sorted until the big fellow was born. Yeah. Um now so after your good really good season in twenty thirteen you didn't play a senior game in 2014, although you were in the Northern Blues best on numerous occasions. Yeah. What reason, I'm a crazy card supporter, but what reasons were you being given from the coaching staff as to why you weren't getting picked? Because it's not as if Carlton were dominating in there, there were no changes each week. So, so Nick, Nick Graham played a lot in the second half of the season. Yeah. And he was obviously getting named in the best a lot in the first half as well. Yeah. And I just couldn't understand why yourself, Nick, a few other young guys weren't being played ahead of guys like Carrazzo or McLean, like I don't want you to you know, have a dig at anyone, but no, why, um, why did, did they give you reasons? Were they just like, you need to work on this or you need to do this, or was it just sort of, you kept trucking away? And 
I reckon if I could write a book with the reasons and excuses I got every week, there'd be a different one literally every week to why um, to why I wasn't getting played. And it just to, it got to the point where I was like, I'm, I think it was about half, almost halfway through the season, and I went up to Shane Rogers' office yeah. in the Blues. The senior side had just gotten pumped. Yeah by someone, I can't remember who it was, and I'd had a really good game in the twos. Yeah. And I wasn't getting picked again. And I said to him, I'm not going to play a game this year. I said, I know it sounds negative, and it's not the right mindset. I said, but I know now, after the game I had on the weekend, that, no, I don't know which game it was, it was the Northern Blues had played Werribee. Yeah. Bobby had been born Anzac Day. So if we had Bobby, I had left, sorry, I'll backtrack again, sorry. That's okay, no worries. It was the 20, it was Anzac Day, I've always born Anzac Day. I was told midweek that you're a big chance to play this week. Come off a good game in the twos. Yeah. Karatso, Andy Karatso had some injury, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. So they said, okay, start watching, start watching some players. We was probably playing West Coast, they said, look at Luke Shuey, Prittis. Yeah. Start watching vision of them, so I went up there watched some vision, did my homework, which I would do every week on any opponent. Yeah. And then I got to train Friday morning. I told the club, we knew that Soph was getting induced stand that day, and they knew yeah. a couple of weeks out this is what's going on. I like, oh, yeah, no worries. So I got, we went into hospital the night before, so I've got induced, and she sent me home and said, look, there's no point in being here, you got training in the morning. Plus, I was literally been told that I'm 90% playing. Yeah. So I went into training and then, um, Got in there, got ready to train, walked out the track and Carrots came up to me and said, look mate, I'm not going to get through this session, just get your mindset around that you're going to play. Yeah. I was like, okay, no worries, kept it pretty quiet. And then came off the training track and uh, Lyndall from the club had had my phone and she said, oh look, Soph, Soph's called, you, things are heating up, you've got to go. I was like, okay, no worries, told the coach, just went off and then um, obviously had Bobby, went home that night, got a good sleep, rang Nick. Saturday morning and he said, oh look, we're not going to pick you because of what's going on in the last 24 hours. Um, you know, we just don't know where your mindset is. And at that time I didn't think much of it and I thought, you know, okay, I'll accept that, you know. He doesn't know where my head's going to be at coming into a game. Yeah. When I... Did Carazzo play? No, he didn't play. He was out injured. He got, um, I don't know, I can't even know what was on him. Yeah. Uh, so I went and played the twos that night. Got best on ground, got pulled from the game halfway through the last quarter. They said, come off, I yeah. think you're going to go up next week, so we'll yeah. just rest you. I said, like, okay, no worries. And then coming into the next week, I said, okay, yeah, look, you're in. And then got to the last session on a Friday, and they said, look, no, mate, you're not playing. And that's when I went up to Shane's office and said, I'm not going to play a game this year. Yeah. Because I'm getting told, things like that. And then that's it. It was just continuous. Yeah. The last session of the week, I'd be told, oh, look, no, you're not in. This is why. Go back to the twos, do this, and then keep doing. I was hitting all the sort of KPIs they wanted me to do in yeah. the reserves and then still not getting reward yeah. um, in terms of playing AFL footy. And it yeah. just got to the point where I was like, I don't know what else I can do. Yeah. And I've been emergency probably eight out of the first ten rounds of the year. Yeah. Um, and then dislocated my shoulder one day out of Bendigo and then that was it, that was my season done. Yeah. And it finished really prematurely when, you know, maybe I could have got some games in the back half of the year. Yeah. And it, it, I'd be in a different situation now, now, but yeah, my year was over like that. Yeah. It was, um, it was, it was just really frustrating. It didn't just affect me. It, I'd come home, I'd tell Sophie, oh, this is why I'm not in this week. And, you know, she sometimes, she, cry sometimes because yeah. she just felt so sorry for me and then her top family as well and they get upset and but you just got to I just try to put on a brave face go out there yeah. battle again and, and see what would happen the next week what's that like obviously when you're at a footy club that's your job so obviously some of your best mates are there mm. was it what was how did they deal with like one of their mates in you who they said is training hard playing well in the twos and then still not getting rewarded do they Come up to you and go, mate. Keep going, or mate. Yeah. Like they're at shit. What they do, like. Yeah, I had, a, that. I had a lot of the boys come up to me. You know, 
all they could really say was, you know, keep doing what you're doing, your opportunity will come. And then yeah. Brock McLean came up to me one day, he said, look, the leadership group got together and they, we sort of sat and chatted about you and you, the effort you're putting in and the little reward that you're getting. And, you know, we just want to let you know that the playing group can see what, how hard you're trying. Yeah. Just really just, as I said, keep doing what you're doing and hopefully an opportunity will, will come. And then, you know, we beat VFL the last session, the, the, the AFL squad that were training, the VFL boys are training after. Yeah. And I had boys come out of the AFL meeting and they'd say, oh, Mick just pumped you up again in the AFL meeting. Like, oh, you know, Jared Coach is doing this, he's, he's training really hard, but he's not getting a reward. You know, you've got him breathing down you guys next for spots, but and I would say, I'm, well, but I'm not going to Yeah, exactly. You can use that as a threat of your life. Yeah. You're not going to actually do um, something about it. I'm not getting picked. And I'd say, yeah, I'll, we just, he does it all the time, but we don't know why I'm not getting a game. So yeah. um, it was, that was sort of more hurtful to hear than actually getting told why you're not in. Yeah. Because if everyone else is talking about you and how well you're going, but then you're not getting picked, it was just like, you know, mate, I'm just standing there, I don't have a reason why. Yeah. So, yeah, but the, my mates at the club were great. They would continually, you know, support me through everything. And yeah. uh, meeting with an injury as well, you know, I've got calls from all of them, you know, supporting me, wishing me well from the rehab and, and yeah. whatnot. So the guys, they are, they're close. Uh, we do look after each other. Yeah. Did you have any, like, conversations with coaching staff towards the end of the, not end of the year, you said it was... Uh, Anzac Day. Yeah. So did you have any conversations with them after that? Because it, is it hard going from your perspective being like, you want to sit down and be like, seriously, why aren't you picking me? But then at the same time, you don't want to get on the coach's wrong side and then obviously they're not going to pick you at all. Yeah. Did you just have to keep training, keep putting your head down or did you have any like frank conversations being like? Yeah, I, I, um, I had a few. Yeah. Mick, he's really good. His door's always open and yeah. I would walk in there every couple of weeks and say, look, give me some feedback. What am I doing? What do I need to do? Yeah. And he was great. He'd sit me down, give me feedback, and, you know, I'd go away and I'd do it. Um, it got to the point, I, was, I remember talking, I worked, I worked closely with Rob Wiley, who's, mm -hmm. I found Rob's a great coach and a really good developer of young players, and yeah. I really enjoyed working with him. Um, I was tagging in the twos so like, the first five games of the VFL season. Yeah. Um, doing a good job of it, um, you know, really restricting my man and getting plenty of the ball myself. And then we sort of said, look, why don't we just play as a normal mid? And I said, yeah, look, that'd be great. Um, and these guys, look, we'll sit down and we'll watch vision of AFL players that yeah. play your similar style. And um, I said, then like the next five games, I just played and, and won my own footy. And yeah. I did that well. I was getting out uh, a lot of the ball and, and doing what was asked of me. And then Nick sort of said, look, the only way we really see you getting inside is as a run week. So I went back to tagging again. Yep. Um, which, yeah, I did that again. And then um, we sat down, what was that? <laughs> we sat down, I remember Michael Osborne, Luke Webster and myself, we went into Mick's office and we all sat down and Luke Webster said to Mick, how does Jerry Cash get a senior game? Yep. Um, and Michael Osborne, said exactly the same thing. They said, you know, he's done, he's doing everything that's been asked. And they, we tried a few different positional changes for me. Yeah. Um, and that really worked. And I started playing a bit more of it as a high half forward that would come into the stoppage. And, yeah. and once again, yeah, I did a few things well. And then, but it was unfortunate that a couple of weeks later, I dislocated my shoulder. Yeah. And then that was a couple of weeks of, a couple of weeks of, Rehab that I was out for. Um, came back in my first game back. Was playing really well. Had a good game and then got reported for a week. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the lunchroom by myself and Mick walks in and goes, oh, "The day, the week I want you to play, you've got yourself a play." Oh, of course. He's... And then it's like, "Oh yeah, of course I get that excuse." Yeah. And then missed that week. Um, came back and played and. I went for an overhead mark, there was no one around me, you know, I put my arms up and my shoulder just slipped out. Yeah. I felt like, you know, the second time in a month, my shoulder was dislocated. Yeah. This time, there was no contact at all. Yeah. And I just sat on the bench and was like, no, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm done, I don't want to play. 
I want to get this right and just move on, get ready for next year, wherever that may be. So at the end of last year, 2014, um, what were you expecting when you walked into the end of season meeting again? Did you have the same feeling you did, you know, the three or the two years before that when you walked in? Um, I was sort of had a few. Here he is. Hey mate, the big fella. <laughs> Um, I had mixed emotions. I thought I was more 50-50 going in, whereas two years ago I walked in going, nah, I'm, I'm definitely gone here. I thought maybe they might look at my, obviously my good form in 2013, my really good first half of 2014 in the reserves, and then go, oh look, my injury happened literally as I was going to get a senior game. and. I think, oh look, we'll give him another year on the rookie list, yeah. hopefully he'll develop again, get him over his shoulder and we'll go from there. But then it was it was deja vu of two years ago, it was, we don't have a spot for you. Yeah. Um, they, Mick said they want to play a really offensive midfield, um, like he had at Collingwood in his last couple of years when they won premierships and yeah. played in grand finals and they didn't seem to be part of those plans and I was like, okay, yeah, no worries. Um, Thank them for that, you know, the yeah. two years and just I walked out of there and basically walked out of there with the finger and walked out and yeah, that was it and that was... So walking out of that meeting, knowing that you've now got a young son and mm. a house and a fiancé, was it really hard trying to figure out your next step? Because you, like you said before, you're, an, you're grown up now, you've got more responsibilities. Yeah. Was it harder to figure out your next step than it was two years ago? Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out actually. <laughs> um, I, suppose, I, I walked out of there, I was 23, and I didn't have anything behind me in terms of a tertiary education. Yeah. Um, purely because I didn't know, I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. I do have a goal that I do want to, where I want to end up in terms of, of, of a job, mm -hmm. but that's when I can't play footy anymore. Mm -hmm. and that's, when I decide whether that's to give up the dream of still playing high level footy. Yeah. Um, I rang the manager and told him, look, this is what's going to happen. This is what's happened. He said, okay, I'll catch up with you now and we'll discuss. And I said, look, I still want to have a good crack at playing good football. I was only 23. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose the more mature age recruits that are getting picked up this year, it gives hope for guys that are in their early 20s that there's still a chance. Yeah. Probably going to be even harder for me now, considering that it's going to be my third time I'm going to get drafted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of you do think, you know, shit, what am I going to do for a job? What am I going to, how am I going to pay the mortgage? Yeah. And whatnot. All those things go through your head and they still do. Yeah. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's sort of figuring all that out and taking a the old cliche, one day at a time, which yeah. is just what you have to do, really. Um, so you've made your way to Richmond's VFL side. Yep. How did that come about? Uh, they contacted me. I just got a call from Daniel Hull, who's the VFL footy manager mm -hmm. there, and they really expressed a real big interest from early on. Yep. Um, we were talking, well, I was talking to Norwood heavily at the time. Yeah. Um, about going over and, and playing, and they know it falls over for the grand final. They're playing their third grand final in a row, and then watch the grand final. There's you know 40, nearly 45,000 at the grand final. It's yeah. going, wow, how good is this? Yeah. Um, they threw some good footy money at me. They were really talking about jobs, not only for me, but they were really big on trying to work out you know what's going to be best for Soph and, and having yeah. Bobby over there. Yeah. Uh, and we left by sold, but yeah, yeah. we're going we're to move back. And then about a week later, I got went down to Richmond and got a tour of the facilities there, and I walked out of the meeting with Lola. And, <laughs> and I walked out of the meeting with them going, actually, I really liked what they put forward, and yeah. it was weird. I just I walked in there and just got the, the feeling that, I don't know, something said to me, oh, I really like this. Yeah. And I came home, I told so and said, oh, I really liked what it was about. I don't know what it is. I just walked in there and thought, you know, this seemed like a really good environment to play footy. 
and then it got down to um, just crossing off different clubs off the list. Um, Essendon VFL would chase me really hard and being, you know, five minutes away from home, yeah. that was a, a really good, um, you know, really good just be up the road training. Yeah. Uh, and then it literally got down to Norwood and, and Richmond VFL and yeah. at the time what made our decision a bit easier was he got crook, he had a bit of a cold and yeah. we went through a couple of two week period where it was, he was really crook and it was just hard, hard work yeah. looking after him and um, running a household <laughs> and then we thought shit if we're in Adelaide next year yeah. there's no way we're both blessed that Bobby what are you doing? We're both blessed that so's parents are two minutes away. Um, my family's five minutes away. We've got this great support network yeah. around us. And if we didn't have that, imagine being in Adelaide on training at night, so I was by myself all day with Bobby. Yeah. It just would have been really tough. It was and I rang Mark Ross and I said to him, Look mate, I'm my heart wants me to come over and yeah. he said, Look, I understand where you're coming from. I said, Look mate, it's just twelve months too early. We yeah. just couldn't do it now. Yeah. Um, and uh, looking back now, it was the right decision to make because you know, I'm really enjoying my footy at Richmond. Yeah. Um, it was. It's just really. It was really good to go down there as, a, as an unknown and yeah. and just start start from scratch. You know, yeah. meeting new players, new coaching staff, meeting and just getting involved in a new club again. Yeah. Um, you've also been named captain of Richmond very outside. Did you get that written into your contract? No, <laughs> someone over there wanted me to. <laughs> she's, you know, she's bloody, I'd walk in the before it was announced, early in, in November, she goes, oh, Captain Acacia, how are you? I was like, shut yeah. up, idiot. Yeah, <laughs> she's planted the seed early. Yeah. Uh, she loves it for you just as much as I do, good old son. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I went down there, didn't know anybody, and I just trained hard. Um, wanted to get really fit again, and obviously, probably just to have another good crack at playing good footy again, yeah. which I know I can. And I'm at the mindset now of my footy where, you know, if I get picked up again, yeah, it's a bonus, but it's more so about pride now and having yeah. going down there, okay, I'm going to have a really good year if I get drafted. Yeah, amazing. If I don't, then at least I can walk away and say, look, I had a really good year. Yeah. Um, did everything I could. Not too sure what is going to go on in the future, but yeah. worry about the now and then just train as hard as I can and embrace the Richmond way as we call it. But do you think, are you looking forward to the fact that you don't have to try and push for a senior spot, that you're playing in that, that you're playing in the, the Richmond VFL and you're not obviously a Richmond AFL to play, so you're not yeah. stressing each week about Am I going to get a game? Can I go up? What do I have to do? You just go there and play your footy? Yeah, I think that it does put that less pressure on yourself, especially um, coming off a rookie list. Like that's all I've ever been in an AFL system. Yeah. You're on a one year contract every year. Yeah. You've got to do double everything or what else. Yeah. You know, you see the big names walk out at training at two o'clock in the Arvo, and I'm just about to start my third tough session for the day. Yeah. I haven't even done my rehab yet. Yeah. Um, haven't watched my vision yet, and I'm thinking, oh, what's he need to go home right now? And I'm here busting my ass. Yeah. With all due respect to that person, he's a superstar, and he's made it for a reason. But I'm here doing everything I can. Yeah. And I know I'm going to be at the club for another hour and a half. He's probably going home for half an hour. It's just, you're just you're yeah, constantly thinking shit, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, this is what's going to make me play well. And then yeah. I suppose, yeah, I went to Richmond and I told them everything that had gone on in the last couple of years and basically Tim Clark, the coach, said to me, look, I just want you to not worry about that. You just worry about playing to your strengths. Yeah. Um, and just, I said to him, I want to really start to enjoy playing footy again. Yeah. Not that I'd... I didn't love it, but in terms of enjoying it without worrying about, you know, oh, I've got to, I've got to play well this week because I've got to you know, senior selection because if I get, if I play senior footy, then I'm going to get a match payment, which is going to help us financially, yeah. um, and then that'll be good, and 
old stuff and you go, if I play well then I might get another game again and then um, yeah, just your just mind is constantly ticking over of what you, you needs to be done and yeah. so yeah, it has been good just going down and, and just relaxing and, and training. Yeah, nice. Now, little segment called the Fast Over Five. This first one might be hard to answer, but favourite sporting team? Who did you support growing up? I was North Melbourne supporter. Yeah, yeah. King. That's <laughs> an R forward. Yeah. King Kerry. Um, what's my favourite sporting team? Who do I like? Yeah, VU Flames. Flames. So it's an full song. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Um, favourite food? Um, Lebanese food. Right. Uh, favourite chocolate? Anything that is chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Cadbury. Uh, favourite movie? Good fellas. And favourite holiday destination? Uh, I'm going to say Noosa. Noosa. <laughs> yeah. Um, and finally, what's something not many people know about you? Oh, I'm not too sure. Uh, uh, Jamie, you talents, you anything, you. <laughs> so I said, I'm a really good dancer. Uh, don't mind I've me. actually seen some of those on Facebook. I don't mind a bit of a bully. Um, oh, jeez, what? Not a very good basketballer. Yeah. I know that's boring. Yeah. I can't throw, thanks to my really good shoulders. But, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. something else I wanted to bring up. Um, on your Instagram, the the videos you've got of your dad. Uh, <laughs> my, my dad. <laughs> where did they uh, Where did they originate from? Where did that um, Where did that idea start? I don't know. It just started one night. We were sitting at home. Dad's gone on this rant. I just started recording it. And I put it on Instagram and people loved it. And then every time we go around there now, um, we just start egging him on. Or he'll start up a rant or start abusing someone. And we'll just start filming it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's it's taking a bit of a hit now. He's, he's started gathering a bit of a following, old Geordie. <laughs> um, yeah, he really has. Some videos where he's having got your brother and then... You guys are just my poor brother, he just cops it, he just gets belted. He's like a little guinea pig we just send in there to get, <laughs> to get there, the bait. Um, no, but Dad, if, he, if Dad swears and abuses you, it means he likes you. Yeah. And he'll tell you that too. So, um, just quiet, I think he doesn't mind the, the attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, my Dad's 50 this year, but still he's 21. So, yeah, right, okay. Um, he's a good man, Joey. A little shout out for him. Yeah. Well, that's all I've got. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks for having me, mate. Thanks, Joe. Cheers. <laughs> nah, look, I reckon he needs to play Casbolt deep, use Henderson as your high half forward, and then have Jones roaming in between, just crashing packs. Um, then you've got Clem Smith and you've got sort of Dylan Buckley running around their feet and Tut bringing in some speed. So, no, nah, I reckon it'll be alright. Well, there you go, guys. There was my interview with Jared Kasher. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Now, in the next couple of weeks, I'll have interviews with John Ralph from the Herald Sun and David King, who is on Fox Footy, and he managed to play a couple of games for North Melbourne. Um, so those will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for tuning in, guys.